All right, man, Torture Talk. 12 o'clock show, 12 o'clock show. You know what it is, man. You know what it is. We back in here. Hey, man, listen, man. King of the North. You know, look. All right, so today I'm going to be talking about a clip that's going viral of Wallow and uh, Gilly talking to Kodak Black. And I got a lot to say about this clip. Uh, before we get into that, you know, I got to get my legendary spill. This is Torture Talk, 12 o'clock show. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, let me work on your subscription today. All the beautiful, sexy, single ladies, put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones at. Just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, links on the screen right here, Cash App. PayPal's in the description. They call me the Hidden Gem. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over 12,000 subscribers. And counting, a million by Monday morning. Let me know where you're from, too. I like to hear where y'all from. I appreciate everybody that's here with me, that's been rocking with me, that's been sticking with me, even though some things y'all disagree with. You know, I love y'all. I still love y'all. And, um, yeah, man, I got a couple of episodes coming up today. And uh, make sure y'all check out the 8 a.m. show this morning. And make sure y'all check out the 6 o'clock show that's coming up. And I got an extra show coming up, too. So make sure y'all check that out, too. So look, we're going to get into this clip, man. And uh, yeah, we'll be back to discuss. All right, so look, man. We about to check this out. Thank y'all for uh, the person that, the people that watched the video where I talked about Don't Quit. Thank y'all, too, to y'all, too, for, you know, leaving a comment. I know that's that type of video a lot of people want to see, but I appreciate y'all and just keep listening to what I said in that video. And just keep it moving, man. Keep it moving. I got some more videos like that coming up. But anyway, let's get into this. <laughs> we love you. We love you. That's some serious shit, man. So, how do you feel, man, to get all that love, though, man? I love the love. I need it. I deserve shit. I deserve it, especially if we do everything I need to do. That's why I deserve it. That's why. Now, I'm going to say this, um, and I might get some, well, I ain't going to get no backlash for it, but we need more, we need more mental health. Uh, how would I say? We need, we need more therapy for young black men in America especially young black men that are celebrities. A lot of us, <clears throat> especially when it comes to uh, the black community, we kind of like, we dismiss mental health. And I think the reason why that is is because we go through so much that we believe that that's what we supposed to go through. I believe that that's what we believe, like we supposed to endure these different pains and different feelings because We've been enduring it, and we've seen our fathers and mothers enduring it. We've seen our grandmothers and grandfathers endure it. So now we feel like it's a generational trauma that's been passed down, and it's in our DNA, and we have, to, and we don't need to talk to nobody about it. And that's what I'm saying. We need more counseling and mental health awareness, and we need more people seeing therapists in the black community. And shout out to, to, to Gilly and Wallow because even though they, they don't have the title of therapist, you don't necessarily have to go to school for it. You can, you know, you can teach people, especially through your experience and through your uh your things that you've been through in life. I know Wallow was in, in prison for a while and he came out and changed his life. And Gilly, he from the streets, so he changed his life. They definitely are, are, are therapists right now. And it's crazy how we need to connect more like this because they kind of separated us from east, west, south, north, the coast or whatever. They separated us. And it's good to see dudes from Philly talking to, I believe Kodak is from Atlanta. I believe from Atlanta. Talking to somebody from Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? And I think that this is this is very huge. I think he's from Atlanta. I'm not sure. I think Kodak's from Atlanta. Right. 
people are relying on just enough cash to survive. Mm -hmm. How do you feel standing in front of this house, though? The memories? Very sweet. I ain't gonna lie for that. Like, if they ain't ever get us out, I'd have never looked at this. I'd have never knew when it was the right time to move the leaders on. Mm -hmm. See, the thing about the thing about Kodak Black is people got to understand he's a grown man and he still has a child's mind. And I'm not saying that in any disrespectful manner. I'm saying he hasn't. You can tell by his mannerisms that he hasn't grown up to be a man because he probably was never shown how to be a man. You know what I'm saying? And you see how they're probably the same age. Wallow and Kodak Black is probably the same age. I'm not sure about that. I'm just don't quote me. But I'm saying they could be. But you see the demeanor of Wallow and the demeanor of Kodak Black. You know what I'm saying? And <clears throat> it's a big difference between the two. And you can see, you can tell, you know, even by how the way Wallow's bending down, you can tell that he means business. You know what I'm saying? And he's willing to help him. And I think that Again, this is another another case of a old a, a guy who basically tried to help a uh, little Dirk and all of them at the time, and look what happened. So I'm sure he's gonna give him another gym and help him. I definitely think that Wallow and Gilly, even though they got the show Million Dollar Game, they should actually do a show called uh, Counseling Black Men, Young Black Men, and they should have young black men come to them and they talk to them on a podcast. That's my idea. Thank you very much. So if y'all do it, Wallow and, uh, 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 and, and uh, Gilly, I need some proceeds. <laughs> like, for real. <laughs> pay, pay the king of the north, or at least just be a guest on my show. Either way, I think it's amazing that this is happening. And I get down this because they were like, they really just had this shit sold up for real quick. Look at me, man. Mm -hmm. Listen, you special. Don't ever doubt yourself. And you got them babies counting on you. See what I mean? Like, some people got to understand. Some people, like Kodak Black, he probably surrounds himself with dudes who are from his same type of mentality. So they don't really know. They're, they're going to basically tell him what they think is, is good, but it's basically, it's like him talking to himself because they're on the same wavelength as him. When you're dealing with somebody from a different hood or a different stature or a different way of, of, of walk of life, then you know, you can take that advice. And I'm thinking that this is what it is. So him telling him he got thing people counting on him, you know, he probably going through a lot, but he don't know how to express himself because he probably is, is, is normalized to Kodak. This is a normalized behavior and he don't even know that he's going through something. You know what I'm saying? He's just, to me, he kind of looks like, he kind of he kind of sounds like he's in a whatever phase in his life, like or he's depleted, I would say, not in the whatever phase. Now, there's going to be times where you're going to doubt yourself, you're going to be in pain, but the baby's counting on you. You got to be here. And I'm telling you that because a lot of people get around you and they see your success and they say, oh, man, a lot of people need you, and they yes man you. I ain't here to yes man you. You know me every time we connect, with you know I got love for you. Not because I need you, I got love for you because you're a young cat, and I was young, Gil was young. Live. Live. And I'm telling you that because you see that love that that lady gave you see how you light up when I talk about your babies live these people. That's some strong words right there, man. Very is very, very, very strong words. And people got to understand like and I and, and I'll be honest with y'all. I know sometimes y'all don't want to hear all this. I know a lot of y'all want to just hear about Drake and a lot of y'all just want to hear about Kendrick. But I, you got to understand. These are the most important episodes. You know what I'm saying? Kendrick and, and Drake ain't going nowhere. Those episodes are not going nowhere. These are important to our community. 
And this goes for whether you're white or black, it doesn't matter. This applies across the board. This is what we need. We need to, <clears throat> we need to start taking care of these young black men in America, man. And I even said, so you know, start taking some of the care of some of these young white boys too. We got to start taking care of our people, man, because they're the future. If we go, when we go, what do you think is going to happen? If, if, if our fathers never taught us and we have a chance to teach somebody after we learned our lesson, we should be out here doing that. It should be for the betterment of our community, and that's white or black. It doesn't matter because when it comes down to it, skin color does not matter when it comes down to you helping somebody being raised. There's some, there's some black kids who's raised by white parents. There's some white kids who were raised by black parents. It happens. But this is what we need. We need people like Wallow and Gilly and people out here to actually tell people what's going on and help them get through certain things. He probably got a lot going on that nobody knows about. They want to laugh. They want to joke. They want to criticize. They don't know your pain. I don't know your pain. But I know one thing. Them babies counting on you, your family counting on you, and, you, and you're talented. You got something that I'm talking about. A lot of brothers ain't here no more that had the opportunities you had. Some of them in prison, some of them dead. And they looking at us like we just some n that don't give a f We junkies, we are criminals. That's what they think of us. Boy, we gotta learn how to change the narrative, brother. You got, you got a lot of people watching you, a lot of young people watching. You see them babies? You see how they Take advantage of that and live, live. That's 100% facts. You got a lot of people watching you. And I think that a lot of times people like Kodak, it's not his fault because he's been raised that way. But you got to understand. It's very difficult to change when you are in an environment that is. You don't know if it's no, if it's if you don't know that it's normal. Like some people believe that. Being in a, being in certain uh, gangs or certain what's the name? Now it's different for Cali. I'm just gonna excuse Cali. Cali is different, and and I'll explain that in a little bit. But when you are uh, in a certain area where people are trying to pretend or somebody trying to, even if they just real about it, it's become normal, and it's like it's like water to them. It's just normal. And I'll explain it to you like this. I was in Chicago one time, and I was at the, I was at the McDonald's. Do not ask me why I was at the McDonald's, but I was at McDonald's. Couldn't find nowhere else to eat, so I had to eat that garbage. But either way, um, if you want to know what I got, it was fish fillet. But um, I was at McDonald's, and this lady was talking to uh, another employee, and she was telling her how eight people got shot two days ago or three days or something like that. She was saying eight people got shot and two of them died. And the other ones, they don't know if they're going to make it. Right. And she was saying she feels sorry for the people in the hospitals because they got to get all this. And a lot of these young brothers and she, and the way she said it, she didn't say it like, she didn't say it like she was, uh, it was, it was a sense of urgency where she said it kind of like, like it was, it was the way she said it wasn't like it was a sense of urgency. The way she said it was kind of like it was normal to her that these people were getting killed every day. And that's the feeling I got. It was like she was cold, but she wasn't deliberately cold. It was just she was cold because it's something that she sees all the time. And I think that we have to break that cycle of the mentality of a lot of these young kids who think that taking somebody's life is just a normal thing. You take somebody's life, they didn't, they have no care in the world and they, and, and they just get you out of here. Could be a reason, a lot of reasons why that is, but at the same time, some people believe that it's an endless, it's an endless cycle of retaliation that they can't get out of. And even if they do get out of it, Somehow they're still in it some way, somehow, because they say what they say. You could take you could take a nigga out the hood, but you can't take the hood out of nigga. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it goes. So we got to break that cycle. If 
Don't hurt yourself, brother. And that's why we come down here. Because everybody else want to laugh and talk about it and comment and critique you. F all that. It's about what you feel, in your, feel inside of yourself, but you got to understand this. Queen, Prince, King, Isabella. Prince, King, Queen, Isabella. Prince, King, Queen, Isabella. They counting on you. Don't play them babies. Don't sell them babies out. Live for them babies. You hear me? Yeah. I love you, man. You hear me? But that's the thing you got to understand. Some people have this trauma that Wallow can help them with, but it's an ongoing pattern that they have to sit down and talk to somebody that is a professional or they need, a, they need continuous guidance until they, uh, until they be able to walk on their own. And him telling him this is an absolute amazing thing to see because we need like this. A lot of us don't, a lot of us don't give a chance. They don't have a chance because usually when you're a superstar, he's a superstar. Kodak's a superstar and he has, he has money. He has hits. He has songs. He has mixtapes. He's a legend to certain people. You know what I'm saying? And he has a lot going on that I think, he got to show up like a man because he's still showing up like a child, like a teenager. And he's a man because he don't know how he never, he never, from what I'm observing, he never came across somebody like a, like a, a father figure or a big brother or somebody from a different plane showing him, bro, you need, this is what we need to do, bro. You know what I'm saying? He got to sh show up differently, and, and, and hopefully this is going to help him. I love you, man. That's a boomerang, that bitch. Boomerang, my wet. I, I ain't going to lie, right? I'm going to just spoil the moment right now. You hear me? I appreciate you so much, right? Me and I was worth the game, family. I ain't going to say this shit, right? But the morning, homie, you need to see a million dollars, homie. That ain't even flat shit. For real, for real, bro. It's because, like, this shit, shit, that shit worth it, bro. All the game, you know what I mean? Yeah, you could tell that he he he's Kodak Black. You could tell that he is he is uh he's certified hood. He's certified hood. Everybody can change. Everybody can um and and I'm not saying it's 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 the hood is a bad thing because I'm from the hood, but I am saying. The hood is not the end all be all. You know what I'm saying? Got to be able to, you know, separate your, your, yourself from that. Because as you get older, the hood mentality ain't going to carry you far because the hood mentality is for the hood. The hood mentality is not for outside of the hood. It's just how it goes. I'm, I don't make the rules. It's just what it is. Like, you, you have to understand the hood mentality is not for outside of the hood. And I honestly believe, and I honestly think, and I'll be honest with y'all, I think we should dead the hood mentality. I think we should develop something that's more positive in the inner cities, but we got to dead the hood mentality. You have to. <clears throat> Always on survival mode, feel like everybody's against you. When you, um, you know, have a, a better shot than most people. So, Either way, man, y'all go check out Million Dollar Worth of Game and all that good stuff. Yeah, shout out to Wallow and uh, Gilly, man. That was that was pretty good, man. I like to see stuff like that. Um, I'm telling you, I think y'all should definitely start a podcast where y'all sit down and just have a therapy session, or even bring a therapist in. Bring a therapist in, and and try to get to the root cause of a lot of this. Because if you can do that, you don't necessarily have to uh, bring up a, a million people there. It could be. You have a therapy session and you can put it on YouTube and there's people who are who will watch it and they will get lessons from that. They'll get affected by that and be like, oh, man, this is. Yeah, I feel the same way. You could help a lot of people because a lot of these a lot of these young black men out here and even some of these young white boys, young black, young white men out here. Uh, I'm sorry to say young uh, white boys, um, young white men out here. Um, 
sometimes I believe that they're just misunderstood and they are raised, they're raised by the lyrics in some of these songs. And some of these songs, lyrics is just not a good way to raise somebody, but they're raised by this music. And that goes for all genres, not just rap. They're raised by the music and they take these things seriously. And then they're raised by social media and TikTok and they all have instant gratification. They want things real fast. They can't wait nothing out. And you, and you can't give them something complicated to figure out because they'll get upset about it. And it's like, no, why is it got to be like this? I need something easy to figure. Like, we got to teach these, man. We do. We got to teach these kids, man. And they got to they gotta be in better position. Because right now, it just doesn't look good for them. So, Either way, man, thank y'all for joining me. Six o'clock show coming up, man. Make sure you go check out that eight o'clock show too, man. Love y'all. See y'all. Peace, guys.